payroll is one of your biggest expenses. And so one area where you can recoup more profit out of your business is managing the turnover in your business and how you onboard A players can have a significant impact on reducing turnover. You work hard in your business. On the Profit by Design podcast, we ask the big question. What has your business done for you lately? Hi, I'm Dr. Sabrina Starling. I'm the business psychologist, the author of the Four Week Vacation and the How to Hire the Best series, as well as the founder of Tap the Potential, where we coach entrepreneurs like you to design sustainably profitable businesses that give you more time for what matters most and more money in your bank account than ever. Because after all, we believe work supports life, not the other way around. Weekly on the Profit by Design podcast, we bring you tips, tools, and strategies from our own experiences and from the experiences of our guests who are entrepreneurial thought leaders and real life entrepreneurs, all to support you in making intentionally profitable and sustainable business decisions to live the lifestyle you desire. Do you have open roles that you're struggling to fill in your business? If so, you're not alone. If you're like the majority of small business owners, you could be using outdated, even haphazard hiring methods that are not getting you the results you want. And what do I mean when I say haphazard? Well, I mean, you create a job ad, you get it out there, and you just interview whoever shows up and you pick the best out of the people who show up. That's a haphazard hiring method. And that sets us up to mishire 75% of the time. There's a better way to hire. There's a way to hire where you are aware of who the A players are that you want to attract and you're tuning into the psychology of those A players. I want to dig deep with you on this and share what's working right now for hiring A players based on the understanding of what it is that A players want in a job. It's not what everyone else is advertising. It's not all those perks and benefits that you see out there. There's more and we're going to get into it. And it's actually something that is easier for you as a small business owner to deliver than you might be thinking it is. Join me in my upcoming webinar, What's Working Now, Hire the Best and Grow Your Team of A Players. Go to tapthepotential.com forward slash hire the best. Almost nine out of 10 entrepreneurs are experiencing symptoms of burnout. Almost nine out of 10 entrepreneurs say their business cannot run effectively without them. We surveyed over 225 entrepreneurs using our Better Business, Better Life assessment. And these are some of the results that we're seeing. And what's interesting to me is how this relates to hiring, because nine out of 10 entrepreneurs are experiencing symptoms of burnout. Nine out of 10 entrepreneurs feel like their business cannot run effectively without them. And almost nine out of 10 entrepreneurs have no system for attracting A players to their team. Do you see a pattern here? I sure do. And the other thing that I am so aware of is how hiring, onboarding, and team development relate to your profitability. At Tap the Potential, we are all about work should support life, not the other way around. And we've designed the Tap the Potential solution to be the guaranteed path that supports you in designing a sustainably profitable business that gives you more time for what matters most and more money in your bank account than ever. A key component of the Tap the Potential solution is hiring and retaining your A players. So that's why on the Profit by Design podcast, we're putting so much attention on this right now because so many of you are struggling to hire. You're dealing with high turnover. People are leaving. They're taking jobs for higher wages and salaries. And I'm hearing your real struggle with so much of the key functioning of the business coming back onto your shoulders while you're trying to grow and build the business. And there's The other challenge is is there's so much business opportunity out there right now. And so when you don't have the team members, you're passing on that opportunity. So today on the podcast, I really want to dive into an overlooked area to support you 
in retaining those A players. Once you get them on your team, that what you do with them once they're there really determines whether or not they're going to stay. So the onboarding of A players is a critical component of your hire the best system that you want to put in place in your business. So you can do all the work on the front end to bring in these A players. But if you neglect what you do with them once they come on board, or if you're like the typical business owner, you hire them, you're busy, you kind of throw them in and they have to just learn as they can. And maybe you spend a little bit of time with them on the first day and then it's hit or miss throughout the first week. And then, yes, you check in with them the second week and so on. But they're really getting a lot of haphazard training and you're not designing an onboarding experience For them. So, we're going to just kind of break down what's involved in a good onboarding experience. According to Gallup, only 12% of employees feel their organization does a great job of onboarding new employees. When we surveyed our business owners with the Better Business, Better Life assessment, only about seven out of 10 said they had a system for onboarding team members. And I question the quality of the system. So what I want, I really want you to think about is treating your onboarding of new team members and giving as much thought to that as you do bringing on new clients and customers in your business and the experience that you create for them. I know so many of you have worked on designing your client and customer experience and you've been very intentional around it. You want to do the same thing when you bring on A players to your team. The Society of Human Resource Management estimates that turnover may be as high as 50% during the first 18 months on the job. And turnover for us as small business owners is very costly because it can cost up to six to nine months of an employee's salary to find a replacement. And you put all the time and effort into training that new team member. And if they leave in the first 18 months, you're having to start all over again. So that's one area where profit really leaks out the door of your business. You know, payroll is one of your biggest expenses. And so one area where you can recoup more profit out of your business is managing the turnover in your business and how you onboard A players can have a significant impact on reducing turnover. And I also want you to think about the onboarding experience as lasting at least 12 to 18 months in the business and then transitioning from that first 12 to 18 month period into ongoing team and leadership development for your newer team members so that everyone in the business, including the new team members, but also all team members are getting that ongoing development. But for here on the podcast today, we're just going to talk about the onboarding experience. First 18 months is a critical period to support your new team member in building strong relationships within your team. The relationships are why people stay. It may surprise you to find that there's research showing that people will stay at a bad job longer because they have a friend on the job. Oh my gosh, right? And so think about this. If you're working on creating a great place to work, and maybe not every day in the office is wonderful and happy, because that's how it is in real life, even great places to work, it's not always sunshine and roses. But if you're creating a great place to work, and your team members are making friends on the job and building relationships, that is a key retention factor. And so you want to set your onboarding experience up from the get-go to be focused on building relationships. And the first relationship you're building is your relationship with your new team member. And if you've ever experienced being hired somewhere and starting a first day on the job and all the training, it's loaded with paperwork. You have a lot of information coming at you. It's very tedious and oftentimes it's just exhausting. And so I want you to think about how that feels for a new team member coming into your business. Like that's their first experience with your business. If you were doing that to your clients and customers, if you were throwing a lot of paperwork at them and making them feel overwhelmed, you'd probably lose them as a customer, right? 
So why do we do this to our team members? Let's back this up and let's design the onboarding experience around building a relationship. And so when you're building a relationship, one of the keys we know about building relationships is to be interested, not interesting. So if you talk all about yourself, the other person is kind of checking out, they're getting bored. So be interested in them. You want to take the time, especially on the first day, to get to know this new team member. And you want to plan for fellow team members to spend a significant amount of time with the new team member during the first day and the first week of their employment with you. So that may be setting up lunches. That may mean the new team member is having different meetings set up with key people that they'll be working with on their team and having that, having those one-to-one conversations where people can have that opportunity to get to know each other. So some of the things that you want to learn about your new team member during the first day and the first week are what are their strengths? The people map assessment is a great tool that you can use to just find out their communication style and how they show up and how they see the world and how they communicate best. We like to give this right away to our team members at Tap the Potential. It's a very simple tool and the results are immediately usable. Other things that you want to find out about are what are their goals? What do they want to accomplish in the next year, in the next few years, and any big life goals that they have? Even ask about, do they have a bucket list and what's on their bucket list? The reason you want to start asking about these things is you're giving them the opportunity to develop a mutually beneficial relationship with you. And you want team members who feel supported by you in pursuing their goals, not just goals at the company, but overall life goals and overall career goals. And you want them connecting with you around that so that you can find ways to support the development of their role while they're with you in the company, but also be a part of their career journey because they may not be with you forever. And that can actually be the best thing because you can be that stepping stone on their journey. And you can celebrate that. And as I've mentioned in previous episodes here on the podcast, when a great employee leaves, and they go out into the world, and they do something else that was important to them, you can celebrate that and share that in social media, share it in your newsletter, because you created an opportunity for them to advance themselves and advance their careers. And all that is going to do is make you more attractive to bringing more A players onto your team. So that's part of building your A player pipeline. So you're laying the foundation to do this in your initial conversations on the first day, you want to be establishing a trusting relationship. And a lot of team members who come into your business have not had trusting experiences in the workplace. So you're working to create a safe, supported environment where people can have open, honest discussions and problem solve together, right? That's really the heart of a coaching culture. And you're establishing that with your new team member as they're coming in. And be aware, they might have been in situations where it's not been safe for them previously to be open and honest about their goals and what's important to them in their lives. And so it may take a while, it may take months for them to open up and feel more trusting. But every time you ask your team members about their their hopes and their dreams and their goals and what's important to them, they're going to open up more and more and you're giving them permission to dream. So many of us adults have forgotten how to dream. So don't be surprised when you ask, you know, what are your goals and what are your hopes and dreams? You may get those blank looks. That's okay. It's more important that you ask the question and you gave the space and you listened. And I guarantee the next time you ask the question, you'll get a little bit more from that team member than you did the first time. Find out what they're excited about in their new role. Typically, what they're excited about is going to point to their strengths. And you want to be aligning their role as much as possible with their strengths. Ask them what makes a great boss for them. Ask them how they like to receive feedback and be mindful of that. Also ask how they like to be appreciated. They may struggle to answer that question, but again, you'll get some insight. And every time you ask that question, you will get more insight into who they are and how you can best support them to be successful in their role. 
One of the things that you want to have done before you start the hiring process is to define clear, measurable results that you're expecting from the role. You want to do this before you hire because you want to bring on someone who has personality strengths that set them up to be successful in delivering those key results day in and day out in the business. So when you're at day one with your new team member, this is a great opportunity to revisit and go into more detail about the expected results that you want from the role. One of the best things that you can do for yourself before you get to your new team member's first day on the job with you is to sit down and think through what an A player in this role is going to be doing for you at the end of year one when they're fully trained and they've been gung-ho and they have gone out and they've just learned more and more because that's how A players roll. Think about what they're going to be doing for you at end of year one. And what does that look like? What results are you seeing? And then back it up and say, okay, if they're doing that at year one, what are they doing at nine months in? And then back it up further and say, okay, what are they doing at six months in? What are they doing at 90 days in? What are they doing at 30 days in? What are they doing at the end of week one? What are they doing at the end of day one? What results are you seeing from them at the end of day one? Have all of that laid out for yourself and then share these expectations on day one with your new team member. This is so relieving to your team members to know exactly what is expected of them because that is the key to giving them confidence. When we don't know what's expected of us, we hesitate, we hold back, we may make mistakes, and we may not bring them forward because we're not real clear on what the expectations are. So if you set this up and say, here's what I'm expecting, and we're going to work together to get you here, then your new team member knows where everything is going and what they need to be able to do by the end of day one, by the end of week one. And here's a little tip for you. This makes it super easy for you to see very early on if you've hired someone who's a poor fit for the role. So many times we've put so much effort into hiring that when we get that new team member on board and we start seeing signs that they're not performing the way we expected them to, We hesitate to let them go as quickly as we should because we think, oh, maybe I'll just work with them a little harder and I can get them where they need to be. And that becomes a slippery slope and they end up being on your team way too long. It's much better to fire fast once you realize you have the wrong person for that role and save yourself a lot of heartache and save them a lot of heartache. Laying out your expectations ahead of time makes that a much easier decision for you and also a much easier conversation to have with that team member when you're having to let them go. So give some thought to what you want the new team member's experience to be. What needs to happen for your team member to feel supported and confident and set up for success? One of the things that you might want to do is talk to other team members who were hired more recently and ask them, what were some of the highs and lows during their first days and weeks on the job? That'll give you really good insight into mitigating some of the lows and maximizing some of the highs. So some of the lows tend to be the end of the first day when the new team member is going home probably pretty tired and exhausted. So you want to think about what could you do that might help the new team member feel really good about their day. So obviously ending with a conversation about what was accomplished and acknowledging wins and successes and where they are in meeting expectations for day one. So if they've met expectations for day one, celebrate that and possibly consider sending them home with a gift card to pick up a pizza to share with their family and celebrate their first day on the job. A lot of times that new team member will go home and be very tired and exhausted. And they're, you know, the family asks them, how was your day? And they're kind of like, oh, I learned, I'm just overwhelmed. I learned so much and I don't know. So mitigate that low, send them home with a pizza or a gift card for a meal and celebrate the time with their family and celebrate their new job. When you're doing that, you're creating a great experience also for the family and their buy-in to your new team member working for you because now they're thinking, wow, what a cool business. I'm so glad that my family member gets to work there. 
Be sure that you are setting up clear opportunities for communication with your new team member. They're going to have a lot of questions. So establish when they're going to be meeting with you and other team members who are supporting their training, who they can go to for questions, particularly if you happen to not be available, and the rhythm for when you're going to meet. So the best practice is to spend a lot of time with your new team member on day one. They don't have to be with you all day, but have a schedule and have it set up so that they have a plan for who they're with all day long and they're never left on their own. If they're working on training or watching videos, even if they're on their own doing it, they know who to go to and say, hey, I'm done with this. You know, what do I do next? So that they're never left wondering. You don't want any open loops on day one. And then I also recommend as a best practice that you plan out much of the first week for them. You do start building in some open space for them to be on their own, to watch videos or interact with platforms and other things that they're learning. But make sure that you end each day with a brief check-in or a huddle where that team member knows they can bring up any questions. You're asking them about their accomplishments and their wins, and you are able to provide that in-the-moment feedback with how they're doing with meeting expectations. If you're checking in every day, nothing is building up, and you're able to address issues fairly quickly. And you'll find that training happens much faster when you're investing this time during the first week and putting a lot of energy yourself there and having other key team members also putting a lot of energy there. And I actually recommend as a best practice that you continue this end of the day brief huddle, maybe it's just 10 or 15 minutes checking in with a new team member all through the first month of their time with you. And then the other thing that you'll want to do is transition from that first week into having weekly one-to-one meetings with the new team member, either with you or whoever they're directly reporting to. They need to know this is my chance to ask questions, to update on where I am in my training, find out what I need to be working on next, and just keep the process moving forward. So as we wrap up today's conversation, remember, this is all about relationship building with your team member, because that's how you're going to create engagement and build their enthusiasm for their contribution to your vision. And remember, in terms of relationship building, the worst thing that you can do during a new team member's first days on the job is to be unavailable and to leave them on their own. I once read in a book that this is the equivalent of getting married and not having your spouse with you on your honeymoon from the team member's perspective. Like you start this new job, but then the boss doesn't show up or the person who's training you is unavailable. So you're just kind of left sitting around twiddling your thumbs. Be there for your new team member. Show up, start working on this mutually beneficial relationship and engage them from the beginning. I hope this has been helpful to you. If you want to dive deep into building your own Hire the Best system for your business, take a look at the How to Hire the Best course. It's coming up here very quickly. And one of my favorite pieces of feedback about this course is that it is very simple and efficient learning. Our participants who go through the How to Hire the Best course are taking those small steps forward that when taken in a consistent direction lead to big change over time. So there, it's a five week course. Each week you have move forward action steps that help you build your hire the best system so that you can become a great place to work to attract those A players that you want on your team. And so as you do those move forward action steps, they're simple steps, but they add on to each other. And at the end of the course, you have a basic system in place to attract those A players. Remember, nine out of 10 business owners have no system for attracting A players you want to be the one out of 10 who has that system in place because it's going to make your life better. Having A players on your team is a key piece to you taking your life back from your business. And hiring doesn't have to be hard when you know the right things to do. And you do this from the perspective of A player psychology, and you're doing everything right to attract A players to your team. 
all the hiring challenges that you've had to this point start to go away and it gets a lot easier going forward. So check out the course at tapthepotential.com forward slash course. That's the how to hire the best course, tapthepotential.com forward slash course. And I'm going to be doing a live in our coming up on what's working right now to attract A players to your team. This is a free live in R and it's an opportunity to find out more about what's going on in the How to Hire the Best course too. On the live in R, it's live. You'll get to interact with me, bring forth your hiring questions, and I would love to hear where you're feeling particularly challenged and support you in using what's working so that you can have a better experience hiring A players. So I hope to see you there tapthepotential.com forward slash hire the best. Thank you for spending time with us today. Join our conversation in the Entrepreneurs Take Your Life Back Facebook community at tapthepotential.com forward slash group. Share your aha moments from today's episode, ask me questions, and join in on the fun with your fellow entrepreneurs on the journey to designing sustainably profitable businesses that give you more time for what matters most, and more money in your bank account than ever. And finally, share today's episode with a friend if you know a friend who would enjoy it. This is real life business. Keep your chin up, keep moving forward. You got this. If you've gotten value from today's show, don't forget to subscribe so you never miss an episode. And if you are a repeat listener of the podcast, know that we greatly appreciate you at Tap the Potential. And to that end, I have a request. Please consider leaving us a review on whatever platform you're listening on. Our reviews help other entrepreneurs like you to find us. Be a part of our movement to help entrepreneurs take your life back from your business.